Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs with another edition of what every maker should have one of. This time it's about PCB prototyping and probing signals. Now if you follow the series you will uh, already know what this is. This is the PCB holder from Vela, which I recommend for one-time prototype soldering. It has a few, well, perhaps not unique features, but seldomly found features. Uh, first of all, you can, as you can see, put very large size prototypes inside because you can slide here this side of the holder or bo both sides of the holder here on these rails, which are around 30 centimeters long. And you can rotate uh, your PCB. So that's quite nice for quickly changing from component side to solder side and you have this little tab here with which you can fix the through hole components and because your PCB is uh, lifted around 10 to 12 centimeters above the ground this also helps against neck strain so this is really a nice device for PCB prototyping and you can also of course use it for test and repair work. And for that purpose, as you often have seen in my videos, I usually use these ultra sharp probe tips here because it's always important to poke through the oxide layer. That's the reason why they have to be as sharp as possible. And the other advantage of having them as sharp as possible is that without too much pressure they are simply holding even on IC pins with very small distances. And the problem starts when you want to fix some uh, grabbers. These ones here from Hirschmann, which were the standard in Germany in the 1970s and 80s, I always disliked them uh, simply because they are too large and too heavy. Of course you can also get them in a smaller form factor like this one here, although these are for 2mm banana plugs and not 4mm banana plugs. And even still smaller these ones here we will put also into our shop and you get quite expensive one for even uh, probing or for even holding two IC pins with a very short distance. You see these here barely hold but the risk is always that you are simply shorting out two IC pins lying side by side. Another helpful device is this ceramic solder plate, which is if you're having signals of very high frequency, uh, the ceramic plate just isolates your PCB from the ground and it has very good dielectric properties. So it keeps the signal integrity because it, it behaves nearly as neutral when it comes to radio frequencies. And another helpful device, which I also presented here on the M-Show video series, is this Mastec SMD RLC tester, which has the nice feature that, perhaps you can read it, that you can change the test level of the sign signal to 0.1 volts. And that means you can probe passive components in circuit because no PN junction will turn on with uh, this 0.1 volt sign signal that is used here for calculating the resistance, inductance and capacitance. So, but you have seen there remain some problems uh, and that is just fixing a probe and having still your hands free because if I'm using these probe tips and I need both of them, then I don't have another, another hand free for example to change the range in the multimeter or to change any of the settings in the oscilloscope. And to solve that problem in an ingenious way in comes the device that is the topic of this video. So and here we have the PC Byte kit from SensePeak. As you can see you have a steel base plate and four of these magnetic 
PCB holders which are spring-loaded and the little yellow rings you can see uh, you have to attach them by yourself. They are just for isolating your PCB so that you neither get a short from the component to the copper side nor from the PCB down to the base plate. And you get the base plate in two form factors. This one here is the bigger one in A4 size and you also get one half that size in A5 size. And last week it was advertised that they now already have their magnetic probe holders. And as you can see, you again have a magnetic holder. And then you have this flexible kind of arm. And here in front you have, you can unscrew them, you have the, uh, the probe tips. They are, I hope you can see this, they are with the pogo pins. And in case the tips once you can draw them out, in case the tips are once broken or bent, you get supplied a uh, set of four spare tips. And now you're probing just by in a 45 degree angle usually, just by placing the tips onto your IC and just put a little pressure on them so that the spring action or the spring comes into action and they are holding by themselves. And because they are relatively sharp, they should be able, even with a little force, to poke through the oxide layer or oxidation layer. And we will just in a minute uh, make a little probing here of this IC. Now, uh, what you still need is, of course, a connection from the probe tips to your whatever multimeter or oscilloscope. And therefore, you get a set of four, um, they call them DuPont to DuPont cables. They are especially useful for connecting the tips. All in all, you get four tips. I'll show you the other two ones. Um, for connecting them, for example, to a logic analyzer. And you get two additional ones with four millimeter banana plugs. And of course, you should attach them. Let me reverse that. Here you have a double header so that you, at each probe tip, you can attach two of the uh, DuPont wires or connectors. And let's here use the black one. So this is a relatively well thought, thought out uh, system. But if it really works, I don't know. This is really the first time I'm trying this out. And we will not probe the circuit here live, but it just because from the circuit diagram, we can see between pins so and so and so and so, there will be, for example, a resistor or a capacitor. And we will just uh, probe them with our RLC meter and see if this combination really works. So I've changed the zoom mode a little bit so that you can uh, see a little bit better the IC pins. As you can see, this IC here has a relatively small pin pitch. I think it's a 40th of an inch or 0.025 inch. So let's start with the resistance between pin 1 and pin 28. This should be 100 kilo ohms. And we get 101, or changing a little bit, 100 kilo ohms. So let's go, for example, between pin 8 and 9, with two pins laying si lying side by side. And there we should get one microfarad, and we get 0.956 microfarad, so absolutely correct. So even probing two pins side by side is no problem 
with this uh, system. So I think it has passed the initial test. I was a little bit suspicious if it works as well in practice in real life as in the advertising videos. But you can see uh, it works on the first attempt. Let's try a final one between pin 14 and 15. We should get two 100 microfarad capacitors in parallel giving around 200 microfarads and we get 185 microfarads. So e even though the placing of the probes is not very ideal, I didn't put the base holder of the second probe to the ideal place. This really works on the first attempt and if even I as a mechanical dummy are able to probe ICs with this system then you should get it right also from the first instant and I think this is really something that every maker should have who is uh, probing delicate SMD ICs or SMD components in conjunction with the SMD RLC meter. This is really the ideal combination for uh, testing and probing especially SMD populated PCB. So my verdict is really that every maker dealing with SMDs should have a PC byte kit including the four PC byte probes. So if you liked this video then please give it a big thumbs up. I will link in all the other videos to the M-Show devices I did show you in the first half of this video and also where you can buy the PC Byte kit. So thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.